For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. All right, so first thing is this word average, or this phrase I should say, average rate of change, you wanna interpret this as a single word, basically slope, okay? The average rate of change, as I've noted on down here, is simply the slope of a straight line that connects two points of a function. All right. So in order to find the average rate of change, that means you have to calculate the slope. Okay. Then you might remember, well, how do we calculate slope? Well, there might be a couple of ways, all right, uh, depending upon the equations you may use. Uh, one equation to use here is going to be to use the slope formula is equal to the change in y over change in x, right? In other words, the slope formula can be broken down into y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now what this represents, the twos and the ones are just subscripts. They just mean that, hey, x2 and y2, this represents one coordinate or one point on a graph or of a function, right? The x comma y. And these points represent or I should say these values, x and y, represent another point on, a, on the same graph or on the same function, x comma y. Right, and we just put the little twos down here and the little ones so that we know that we're talking about two different points. That's it. Now here's the thing. They gave you an interval, right? And what do intervals represent? Intervals represent x values, right? So what they told you is they basically gave you x1 we'll call it, and they gave you uh, x2. That's great. We know these then on the bottom of our formula, but we don't know the y values. Darn it, right? What does that mean? Well, it, it, it either means we gotta change the way we're looking at it, meaning we're not doing it right, or we have to figure out a way to figure out the y's. Now, I know a way to figure out the y's. How do we do it? Remember, they gave you the function here. All this means, f of x, just interpret that as y, okay? It makes it so much easier. So this is really saying y is equal to x squared. What this means, that if you know x, you know y, right? If x was one, what is y? It's also one. If x is two, y is then four, right? Because when you plug two in for x and you square it, it becomes four, etc. So this is actually fairly straightforward right? We can find the y values, all right? So let's do that. I'm just going to change the color slightly here. So let's say here's the function, y is equal to x squared, all right? Let's plug in the first x value that was given to us. So y is equal to 1 squared, and that means y is equal to 1, all right? Now I'm just going to put little subscripts down here so I know what I'm talking about, okay? I plugged in my x1 value, I said, so this was really x1 squared, and this would be one, y1, right? This is y1, y1, so look, beautiful. I have my y1 value, all right? So basically, my coordinate, one of my coordinates now is going to be one, that was the x1 value, comma, one. That was the y1 value, what we found. Right? So this is x1, x1, comma y1. Okay? Now what we would need to do is do the same thing then for my second x value. So here I'm going to write y2 is going to be equal to x2 squared. So y2 is equal to 5 squared, etc. y2 will be equal to 25. All right. So now let's just write it out as a, uh, as a coordinate. So the x value here was 5, and we said that the y value that got spit out was going to be 25. So this is now my x2 value and my y2 value. Lo and behold, now we have everything we need, right? Here are the two coordinates now. And all I have to do is now plug them into this equation. So let me erase this, and let's just plug them in. All right? So here is now m will be equal to y2, which we said is 25 here, minus y1, which is 1, divided then by x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 1. So this works out to be 24 over 4. 
right? And now if we wanted to reduce this down, what would we get? Well, it looks like, right, four goes into 24 how many times? It sounds like six. So the slope here, the average rate of change is going to be six, easy enough. Now we don't have any units, so I can't tell you what the units are, but it could be $6 per year, per minute, per second. It could be 6 million people per millennia. I don't know, right? It could be anything, all right? Uh, so now let's approach the same way. Let's do now some speed math here, all right? Same thing. So I know uh, I'm given my X values. Let's call this, we'll change the color. Let's call this X1 and X2. All right, and now what I need to do is first find my y values. So remember, reinterpret this equation as if it said y is equal to five minus two x squared. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my x1 value first, and then if I plug in my x1, I'm gonna get my y1, easy enough. So y1 will be equal to five minus now two times then negative two, I'm just plugging this value in, and that is squared. So that means y1 will be equal to and really what I probably should be doing is writing a little smaller. Uh, this is going to be this will be 5 then minus now, right? Negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. Positive 4 times 2 is going to be 8. So this is really 5 minus 8. So y1 is equal to negative 3. All right. So that's great. So now what I realize is that my x1 value of negative 2 correlates with my y1 value of negative 3. Wunderbar. All right, now let's do the same thing for uh, x2, okay? Put it in a different color. So here we have now y2 will be, I'm just restating the equation, will be equal to five minus two x2 squared. So here we have y2 will be equal to now five minus two times now four squared. So y2 will be equal to five minus now four squared is gonna be 16. Right, 16 times two is going to be 32, okay? And now when we do the subtraction here, right, we're going to come up with a value of about negative what? Negative 27, all right? So now I have my coordinates here as well. So now this will be uh, the x2 value we said was four, and the y2 now is going to be negative 27. So here are the points. All we got to do now is plug it on into the formula, right? So slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, these are the twos and these are the ones, all right? So let's just plug it on in. So y2 is negative 27 minus then y1 is negative 3. Be careful with your parentheses and, and your signs. And now x2 is 4 and uh, x1 was negative 2. All right, so this is really like saying negative 27 plus 3, right? So it's going to be negative then 24. Let me write that a little smaller, negative 24 over now. This is really saying 4 plus 2, so that's over uh, 6. And that works out to be a negative then 4 overall. So that is indeed the average rate of change. All right, last but not least, let's tackle this last one. All right, same thing. Here's my x1. Uh, comma, I should put this in red, y, uh, excuse me, x2. And here I'll also put this part in red so you guys can follow the colors. And let's just start finding our y values, right? y1 will be equal to, remember, this is interpreted as simply y, okay? So y1 will be equal to x cubed, and specifically I'm going to plug in my x1 here. So y1 will be equal to negative 4. Right, and this whole thing is then cubed. All right, now when we do this math, y1 will be equal to negative 64. Okay, so just, you can plug that into the calculator, right? Four times four is 16, 16 times four will be 64. And it's negative because we cubed it, right? Negative times negative times negative is a negative. So let me not box that, but let me put in the coordinates now, right? So the x value here was negative four, comma, negative 64. All right, great. So I'll box this now. Let's do the same thing for the y. So we have now y2 will be equal to x2 cubed. Great, so y2 will be equal to now two cubed. And then we're thinking about what's two cubed. Well, two times two is four, and four times two is then going to be eight, right? 
So here we have a two comma eight, and that will be the coordinates of the second point. Again, we write out our slope formula, that it's equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And lo and behold, we can now plug it in. Remember, these are the twos, these are the ones. It doesn't actually matter if you called these the twos and these the ones. Uh, the math would work out the same. Try it for yourself. So as long as you're consistent, all right? So eight minus then negative 64 over uh, two minus a negative four. Okay, great. So this is really like saying eight, right? Plus 64, which should be 72. All then divided by, whoops, all then divided by now uh, two minus a negative four, which is saying the same thing as two plus four, which would now be a six, right? And then we would have to just do the division there and divide it on out. And we realize that we comes out to a value of 12. All right, so let me just write that on down here. So that's the average rate of change, 12. And that's it, guys. All right, so hopefully this helped. As you can see, kind of just repetitive after a certain point in time. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time.